Hello everybody, um, in this video I will talk to you about basics of hypothesis testing and how to use your graphing calculator to solve hypothesis testing problems with the p-value method. But before we jump into solving problems, I would like to discuss a strategy that will be helpful when you're solving problems and it will help you to figure it out which type of problem you're dealing with and which command you need to choose to solve this particular hypothesis testing problem. Okay, so let's say you have a um, hypothesis testing problem. Hypothesis testing. What you need to ask yourself is the following question. Is the data in my problem quantitative or is it categorical? Okay, so do I deal with quantitative data? If that's the case, that's data that can be measured in units. So something like money or weight is measured in, let's say, kilograms or let's say miles. That's your distance. Okay. So here are your examples of quantitative data. If that's the case, that means the population parameter that we're trying to make an inference about is mean. Okay. You're dealing with mean. Notation for that one is mu. Or you could be dealing with, with categorical data. Categorical. Okay, This is data that cannot be uh, measured in units, but rather you will have a population that can be split in two groups. So for example, what can we talk about? We can talk about percentage of female students. Okay, or percentage of, um, let's see, part-time students, part-time students. So these are some of the examples that can come up uh, when, with categorical data. If that's the case, then you're dealing with what? You're dealing with proportion, proportion, right? And the notation for this one is P. Okay, it seems that this step is not very important, but it actually is. A very common mistake that I see all the time is students trying to solve a problem that deals with mean and you, they're trying to use uh, proportion commands. Well, you're not going to get too far with that. So once you do this, let's say you figure it out that your problem is about mean. Then there's two things to consider. First, okay, do you know your sigma? So sigma is given. That's your first situation here. If sigma is given, this is population standard deviation, right? That's what sigma stands for. If sigma is given, that's one situation. What if it's not? If sigma is not given, then you must have s. s is given. And this is sample standard deviation. Sample standard deviation. Okay. You're always given some sort of standard deviation. It's either sigma, which comes from population, or s, which comes from sample. Okay, And a lot of times, they will actually say sigma is given some number, or s is given some number. But if it's not, then it's your task to figure it out, okay, is this standard deviation coming from population or sample? Okay. Now, if that's the case, then we have two commands here. If sigma is given, then we will be using Z test. If sigma is not given, but S is given, then we will be using T test. Okay? So these are your two options when uh, conducting hypothesis testing for population mean. Now, what if you have categorical data? Well, here you don't need to split it up in any groups. Here we'll be using one proportion Z test. Okay? And eventually we'll talk about two proportion Z tests, so, but that's in further chapters. All right, so these are your three commands that you will need to know um, when solving problems with hypothesis testing. So let's go ahead and do some problems here. Okay. So let's take a look at the mechanics of the p-value method for testing about population mean when sigma is known. First, we have to check our conditions. We have a simple random sample. The population is either normal 
or we, we have a sample that's large enough. And then what do we do? Once these conditions are checked, we state the null and the alternative hypothesis. We use a z-test to find the p-value, and then we compare the p-value to alpha, okay, the um, level of significance. And then if p-value is small, that means the um, statistics that we've collected is surprising. It's unusual. We reject the null hypothesis in um, favor of the alternative. Otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? And then we write interpretation of the problem in the context of this problem. So let's go ahead and solve some problems here. Okay. Let's take a look at this problem here. The American Automobile Association reported in June 2011 that the mean price for a gallon of regular gasoline was $3.70. A random sample of 25 gas stations had a mean price of $3.90. So let's just take a look at these two uh, pieces of information. We have a sample, um, and we have a sample mean that's 3.9, right? $3.90. Is it different from $3.70? Well, yes, of course it is. But the question is, is it different enough for us to conclude that um, the mean price for a gallon of regular gasoline has risen since June 2011. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this problem here. Okay, so problem one. Let's go back here and see if we can figure it out what's going on here. So what is this problem about? This problem is about the mean price of gas. It's measured in dollars. This problem is about a mean. So I will either be using z-test or t-test. Now, I look at this and I see that sigma is 0 0.5, 50 cents. This is population standard deviation. That means I need to be using z-test. So what I would do is the following. I would write all of my conditions that I have here. Okay, what do I have? I have that sample mean is three dollars and ninety cents um, population standard deviation was 50 cents and what else is there uh, we have 25 gas stations so n is equal to 25 so what is the null hypothesis going to say the null hypothesis says that the mean is three dollars and seventy cents Right? That's how much it was in 2011 for one gallon of gas. Now, let's read the question. Test using level of significance, alpha is equal to 0 0.05, whether the population mean price for a gallon of regular gasoline has risen since June 2011. Okay? So that tells me what my alternative hypothesis is. My alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 3.7 okay notice how this number here is the same okay you should not have two different numbers when you conduct in hypothesis testing for um, H0 and for HA okay all right so if you look at your simple uh, sample mean yes of course it is greater than 3.7 but is it greater significantly enough that we can conclude um, that HA is true now so how do we do this? Let's bring your calculator. Oh, it never turns on right. Okay, so let's go to stat, and we're going to test. Now I know my command here is z-test, so that's the first one. We scroll to stats, and here we just input everything. Um, so mu is three point. Oops, let's go back there. Come in one. So mu is three point seven. Population standard deviation is point five. Mean sample mean is three point nine, and sample size is twenty five. Our alternative hypothesis is greater than. 
Now I'm going to calculate my p-value and this is what I get. Okay, so my p-value is this number over here, 0 0.0227. So I'm, over here I'm going to write p-value is 0 0.02, how much was it? 275. Is it less than our alpha, which is level of significance? Level of significance was 0 0.05 here. It's less than 0 0.05, right? Okay, 0 0.05, that's my alpha. So that tells me that I have strong evidence against the null hypothesis. So what is my conclusion? What is my conclusion? Let's write it out. Reject the null hypothesis. Reject H not. There is sufficient evidence. There is sufficient evidence to claim to claim what? To claim that the mean price of gas has risen. since 2011 okay so let's see if we go back to the problem did we answer the question okay test using level of significance alpha 0.05 whether the population mean price for a gallon of regular gasoline has risen and we did we rejected the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative so the conclusion is yes okay this sample mean 3.9 is significantly different it's significantly greater than 3.7 okay so that's how you would solve this problem now let's take a look at the next one what if we do not have sigma the setup is very very similar we still have a simple random sample we check the conditions just like before we would like the population to be normally distributed or the sample size large enough we state the hypothesis, but in this case, we will be using t-test. Just like with confidence intervals, when we did not have sigma, we would use t-interval, right? And the same here. Uh, here, with, with the p-value is small, that means there is a strong evidence that h not is false. So we reject the hypothesis, the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a problem like that okay what is this problem dealing with this problem is dealing with weights of babies in Brisbane Australia and looks like we have a random sample of 44 babies and the sample um, mean x bar is 3276 grams with a sample standard deviation 528 okay so let me go ahead and write out what I have so far so this is problem two. I have a sample of 44 babies, right? And their mean is 3276 grams. And the sample standard deviation, S. So that standard deviation was computed for only those 44 babies. It's 528 grams. So that's my S, 528 grams, okay, um, let's see, formally the mean birth of babies in Brisbane was 3200 grams. Is there evidence that the population mean birth weight weights of Brisbane babies is now different from 3200 grams? And use level of significance 0 0.10, okay, so how would I, um, how would I set up my problem? The null hypothesis in this case is then what? The mean weight is equal to 3,200. Now, why is it 32? Because formally, the mean birth of babies in this city was 3,200 grams. So this is what's accepted to be true at the time, right? But now we have this other sample here with the sample mean 3,276. Is it different from 32? 
definitely but is it different different significant enough well we'll find out so let's see so what would be my alternative hypothesis let's take a look at it let's go back here is there evidence that the population mean birth weights of Brisbane babies is now different different means not equal so mu not equal to 3200 okay again I just want to emphasize this number is always the same for both of your null and alternative hypothesis okay this number right here that's your evidence we want to figure it out if this evidence is strong enough to conclude the um, alternative hypothesis right okay so now I have this s over here and I do not have Sigma that means I have to use t test t test so it will produce a p-value and let's see which p-value we get okay so we go back to the calculator stat test t test okay what is my mu 3200 x bar is 3276 sample standard deviation is 528 and we had 44 babies okay now in this case we do not equal to now let's go ahead and compute it okay what is the p-value p-value is this number right here 0 0.345 That's definitely greater than our alpha level. Now let's see, what was it? 0.10. Okay. It's greater than 0.10. So what is the conclusion? We fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? Fail to reject H0. There is not enough evidence or there is insufficient evidence. There is insufficient evidence. To claim that the mean weight of babies in Brisbane uh, let's see Brisbane is different from 3200 grams okay so let's see is the sample different yes significantly enough no all right now notice we never actually accept the null hypothesis or we fail to reject it right so that means what maybe if we were to take a different sample it would have been significant significantly larger significantly smaller Okay, but in this case, we just say fail to, re uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right? Okay, thank you for watching.